Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On The Range and again today I'm in the A10C Warthog and I guess I was wrong last video. That was not the last video that I had for the CCRP because I have two more off-the-wall techniques that I want to show in the CCRP just because they're fun to do and you can judge for yourself whether or not it's actually worth it in the end. I really don't think either of these techniques in the next two video were uh, really going to improve your performance that much but they are there and they are options and they are kind of fun to do. So in this video I'm going to go over a loft delivery in CCRP in the A10. And by a loft delivery I mean that I'm going to, as best I can the A10, release the bomb in a climb so that the climb angle is going to increase the range of the bomb. Think of it as throwing a baseball. If you want max range out of a baseball you don't just throw it level you throw it up in the air and let it arc down to wherever you're trying to hit. The same principle is going to apply to bombing. So the higher the angle and the higher the airspeed, the more range you're going to get out of whatever you're releasing from the aircraft. Now the drawback on this, and there are a couple of drawbacks to doing this in the A-10. First is that the airspeeds that the A-10 operates in, you know, less than 300 knots typically, especially when you get into uh, climbing delivery, is not really high enough to make a significant difference when it comes to the range that you're going to get out of your weapon. You're going to get into a climb and then just run out of airspeed so that you're not really getting that much benefit out of the climb. Although there is some benefit and we'll see here that it does make a little bit of a difference. The other drawback is that unless I'm just missing something and I mean this for all I know might be how it works in the real A-10 that just really isn't set up to do this but your bombs are always going to fall long when doing a loft delivery as of right now the way things that are, are set up in the A-10 and using the technique that I use the good news on that is that it's consistent you know for a given climb angle a given airspeed and a given G loading it's going to be consistently long at the same distance so you know if you just kinda of like come up with the technique like I have that you'll see here in a second you can bet that it's going to be long the same distance every time. You can compensate for that and get the bomb reasonably close to the target. Okay, now the situation that I've set myself up with is that I have a bombing circle out here. I'll bring the aircraft around so that it shows up in the pod. But I have a bombing circle out on the range. And if I come down to the pod, I'll set it back up in the autopilot. I'll come back to the pod and zoom in. And I've got uh, some air defenses. I've got a Zeus 23, and I've got a couple of ZU 23 AAA sites. So to take out this bombing, this target in the middle of the bombing circle, I would ideally want to do this from high altitude. But I can't really get to high altitude because I just happen to have an SA-6 out there in the distance. So I want to stay as far away and as low as I can, just to uh, compensate for the threats. Now the bad news there is that. I know I need to stay low, but that's in the threat envelope of these AAA sites around this target that I'm bombing. So what I want to do is use the loft delivery to maximize the range of the weapon and use that to, if not stay completely outside of the AAA range, at least stay on the, outside, on the outskirts of it so that they have a harder time tracking and getting an accurate shot off on me. So let me go ahead and get into this and I'll put my... Uh, ECM into AAA because I know that Zeus 23 is going to uh, come at me. I'm going to go to auto also just to help myself out a little bit. I'm going to need it on this one because I'm not going to be able to stay completely outside of the AAA range. So let me first give this a shot. I'm going to try to put a Mark 82 onto the bombing circle and I'm not going to use any compensation. I'm just going to do a basic loft delivery to show how that works. and. That circle just happens to be set up as steer point 5, so I'm just going to bomb on the steer point. And I'm going to call up my Mark 82 profile. And I'm ready to roll in. And we're running on the target, I should say. Now keep in mind that Hold I have up. an SA-6 sight out there in the distance, so I want to stay low level to stay out of that SA-6's engagement envelope. Altitude. Al pull up. Pull up. But I still need to do a CCRP release on this target. So I'm going to come on around. I've got my ASL showing up. I'm going to just run in at low altitude. And then when I get to about, and there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to do it when I, once I get to about 12 seconds time for release. I'm going to pull up 
just a gentle, uh, not relatively gentle, 2G pull to the horizon with my weapons release switch held and let the bomb release. And that should get me at least into the right general area. So let me press on in and I'll be right back. Okay, so coming in at 140 feet, I've got that AAA sight locking me up, 18 seconds to release. I don't want to overfly the target, so I've got 12 seconds to release, depress and hold, I'm pulling up. Weapon away. And turning off the target, staying as pull far up, away from that AAA as I can. So it's still going to track on me, and I'm altitude, going to take a hit altitude. off of this burst, I think. Okay, just missed me. But you can see that the bomb impacted long, and even though I'm not really maneuvering right now, I'm still in the range, I'm far enough away that they're not, knock on wood, going to be effective with their triple-A. And you also saw there that the bomb impacted long, that was the, uh, <laughs> that was the key that I was really trying to show there, although that, <laughs> that was a lot of fun to do, though. but the bomb impacted long. So I know that if I do that, it's going to impact you know, using that technique long at the same distance every time. So now what I want to do is do something about that AAA. And to do this, okay, I already know that the bomb is now going to impact long using this technique, but I want to take this AAA out anyway. So I need to choose a weapon that is not that I don't need pinpoint accuracy on. If I tried to put some Mark 82s in there, the chances of me getting it close enough using this technique would be slim to none. So what I have is a uh, a profile set up for Mark for I'm sorry CBU 87s. I have it set up for a ripple release. Let me pull up the profile here so you can see. Okay, profile. I have it set up for a ripple release, so I'm going to release two bombs at 75 feet spacing and CCRP. And I also adjusted the height of function to 300 feet before getting into the aircraft. That is something that you would not be able to do on the fly. Incidentally, change the height of function or RPM or the function time. Those are set. Uh, mechanically on the bomb. But they are set up for a 300 feet altitude, so we'll be able to make this release. And what I'm going to do is stand off out here at a relatively long range and try to get myself set up so that I'm compensating for that missed distance that I know I'm going to have. So let me make my turning pod sensor of interest and get in here. Okay, so let me pick a, a point short of this target, right about there should work. So let me, let me create a mark point over that location. Okay, so that's mark point alpha and that was TMS short right. And now I'm going to set up on that location and I'm going to put that location that I just had, that I just marked on. I've got that set up as my sensor point of interest, so that's the, the point that the computer is going to calculate or release for. I know that it's going to go a little bit long using this technique, so I just want to align that point that I just created with the target so that knowing they go long, I'm going to get them more or less into the right area. Okay, so if I come in around, I'll give it a little bit further around this way and then come in straight down the line and I should get some good impacts on this AAA. And again, using that loft delivery, so I want to stay low to stay out of the engagement envelope of that SA-6. I'm going to come in, Altitude, wait till about 12 up, seconds, time to release. The person hold the weapons release switch, pull up, just using a 2-3G pull. Mainly just to conserve airspeed so that I don't lose airspeed due to my G-loading and then allow the bombs to release and get out of the area, hopefully staying outside of the effective engagement envelope of this AAA. So we'll see how it goes. I'll be right back. And now I'm approaching the target area, about 350 feet AGL, so that I stay within the fusing constraints of the weapons and get indications. Okay, 20 seconds to release. Okay, picking up a track off that AAA. I'm uh, pressing in, though, 14 seconds to press and hold weapons release switch. Okay, 12 seconds, pulling up. Both weapons away, and let me pull for the deck. You see what I mean? Just in that little general climb right there, I lost about 60 knots doing that. So, I mean, that's not the... it's really not the ideal altitude, technique altitude. at all. Okay, dispense. 
and impact. So I compensated, uh, dropped that a little bit short of where I knew it was going to function since I was using that bluff technique. And looks like I got a good kill on all three of them. Okay, that's the best that's ever going for me. Okay, got all three AAA sites down. And now I can go in there and freely take out that target. But I still need to stay low level to uh, stay out of that SA-6 engagement range. So let me go ahead and end this video by pulling up my GBU-12 profile. I've got this one set up for CCRP delivery, auto lasing for me. And I'm going to come around, pick up that container out there. And go near field of view. Okay, making my target pod sensor point of interest, so that's where I'm going to get cues for. I'll try like a little, I don't know if a uh, lock would, I think a lock would work in this case as well. So I'll assume that I, I still have that AAA out there, and I'll see if a lock delivery does anything for me. Okay, so that's good enough. Okay, targeting pod, master arm, GB12 coming into the area. 50 degrees to go, 2.1 miles, so I should be getting a release very, very soon. 11 seconds, okay, 14 seconds. Okay, popping. Just going to do this for about 10 degrees. And off left. Tweak my steering. Okay, laser fire. And miss, probably because of the loft. That's another, that's a technique that I'm going to, yeah, it did miss long. It uh, stayed, and the key there is that on that delivery, I didn't compensate for the bomb, knowing that the bomb is going to fall long, and for that reason, the bomb just was not able to pick up the seeker, or pick up the laser spot in this field of regard for the seeker head. And that's a topic that I'm going to get to in the next video. So, there you have it. Loft techniques in the A10C. And this can be done from low altitude, high altitude, anywhere at all. But, I'm not really a fan of it. The A10C just is not, or any A10 model, is just not very uh, set up to do that. It just doesn't have the airspeed and the climb capability to make a loft really, really effective. Although it did help out there, in that case. However, it did take a lot of setup work to get the offset correctly set up so that it would hit on the targets. I don't know. It's good to know that it's there, but I don't see myself really using this too much in a, uh, in a just off-the-cuff tactical environment. But, hey, it is there for you to use, and I hope you did enjoy the video. So if you are enjoying this series, please do consider subscribing to the channel, and definitely leave a like and leave a comment. That helps me out a lot. So I will see you next time.